This past week, two states have gotten closer to passing two of the most peculiar laws, which ironically seem to contradict each other on the subject matter 180 degrees, Hawaii being one of them, and Arizona, the other. On April 20, 2010, Hawaii lawmakers, in committee, unanimously voted to advance SB 2937 to a final vote in the House and Senate. The SB 2937 bill is titled, Information Practices, Vexatious Requests. The description reads, exempts disclosure of government records in response to duplicate requests from a single requester, provided that the agency to which the request was made satisfies specified requirements. Sunset date on July 1, 2013. The bill is aimed at so-called birthers who claim Obama is ineligible to be president. Testimony of Chiom Linala Fokino, State of Hawaii, Director of Health. March 16, 2010, at 2.15 p.m., and she states, For more than a year, the Department of Health has continued to receive approximately 50 email inquiries a month seeking access to President Obama's birth certificate in spite of the fact that he has posted a copy of the certificate on his former campaign website. She fails to state that the one posted on his website was a forgery. Last August, According to World Net Daily, Aspero stated that he had confirmed plans to introduce legislation through which the state's lawmakers would force the public disclosure of all President Obama's birth documents held by the Hawaii's Department of Health, including President Obama's long-form original birth certificate. Then, six months later, he introduces this bill. Why the sudden change? This isn't even the worst of it. Aspero is the author of another proposal which places restrictions on the public's access to information even more than SB 2937. This bill, SB 2056, carries the description, permits the public inspection of birth certificates under certain conditions. Some of those conditions are a $50 fee per item to be inspected, submitting to camera surveillance, redaction of information which the health department deems sensitive or confidential and a time restriction of 15 minutes, which must be done in the presence of a Department of Health employee. Redaction of sensitive or confidential information? Huh, in six words, they're pretty much saying you will never see Obama's original birth certificate. But now, the good news. On April 21, 2010, Arizona passed a bill through the House and is waiting on the Senate to pass it into law. This bill is titled HB 2441 and labeled Presidential Candidates Proof of Qualifications. An Act amending Section 16-507, Arizona Revised Statutes Relating to Conduct of Elections. The bill amendment reads, The National Political Party Committee for a Candidate for President for a Party that is entitled to continued representation on the ballot shall provide to the Secretary of State written notice of that political party's nomination of its candidates for president and vice president. Within 10 days after submittal of the names of the candidates, the National Political Party Committee shall submit an affidavit of the presidential candidate in which the presidential candidate states the candidate's citizenship and age and shall append to the affidavit documents that prove that the candidate is a natural-born citizen. So, if all else fails, and we are unable to remove Obama from office before the 2012 elections, then it will require Obama, if he desires to run for a second term, to provide the hospital-generated, long-form birth certificate to the Attorney General of Arizona in order to be placed on the ballot. This bill has already passed the House, and considering the makeup, of the Arizona Senate, with 12 Democrats and 18 Republicans, it looks as if we have an excellent chance of it becoming law. We can only pray that President Obama will be removed before the next presidential election. However, if that doesn't happen, at least he will only be a one-term president. Thanks to you, Arizona. First they came for the communists, and I didn't speak up, because I wasn't a communist. 
Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up, because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up, because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me, and by the time, there was no one left, to speak up for me. Reverend Martin Nymoller, 1945